what is the basis for reaching that conclusion or a belief that something like that occurred? And what are the consequences for those who uh, committed unauthorizing, un unauthorized surveillance? Um, did you say that I s said that it occurred? Uh, you indicated, uh, I think, I, I tried to at least reflect on what your quote was, that you thought spying on a political campaign occurred in the course of an intelligence agency's investigation into Russian interference in 2016. Well, I thought the question was, uh, did I have any basis for saying And that? I'm now asking what the basis is or what the facts are that lead you to that thought. Uh, okay, I, I felt I am concerned about it, and I was asked about whether there was any basis for it, and I believe there is a basis for my concern, but I'm not going to discuss the basis. And what's potential consequences for those who violated the law? Well, it depends what, it depends what the facts ultimately prove to be. Uh, which would be determined in a prosecution? Possibly, but you know, there also kind. Of, there can be abuses that may not arise to the level of a, of a crime, but that you know people might think is bad and want to put in rules or prophylaxis against it. I mean, I remember when uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, no, you know people upset at. Uh, the FBI, you know, spying on or surveilling civil rights groups or anti-war groups or nuclear freeze groups and so forth. And as a result of that, there were a lot of safeguards built in. There were also concerns about surveilling reporters, and so safeguards have been put in. So it doesn't necessarily have to result in a, in a, uh, a criminal investigation or a finding of a crime. Uh, but. You know, part of my responsibility is to protect the civil liberties of the American people, and I think, I think uh, something that is uh, uh, important is that uh, the law enforcement and intelligence agencies uh, respect the limits on their powers. I share that view with you, Mr. General, uh, and uh, am of the same generation in which those things uh, occurred and were alleged to have occurred. Senator Shaheen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I remember that too, and uh, I remember when J. Edgar Hoover's FBI surveilled student groups as well, mm -hmm. having been in one of those student groups that was surveilled. Um, I, I want to ask a couple of what I hope will be very short questions. Over the past two years, the subcommittee in Congress has provided record levels of funding for the Office of Violence Against Women. Um, that is true about the recent omnibus as well. We have not yet reauthorized the Violence Against Women Act, and I, I want to be reassured that the Justice Department, despite... despite All right, so as for, again, further clarification on his comment previous, or earlier in the hearing that he said that he believes some spying did occur on the campaign. Jennifer, now what? <laughs> So I think he was a little puzzled by the suggestion that he was saying necessarily I'm, that it was unauthorized. Say what you mean to me when you say it. When you're an attorney, you're very good at being very careful with your language. <laughs> yeah, and then, but then he said, you know, spying, and then he changed it to surveillance. So I think he was using spying in the same way he was using surveillance, and his goal is to find out whether it was appropriate or not appropriate. Uh, but he did say, I have, re I've re uh, there, are, there, I think there is a basis for concern with regard to, call it surveillance, call it spying, call it whatever you want, the basis for concern about how the Russia investigation was launched is what he said there, but he wouldn't discuss why. And that, and that was even a walk back, right, from saying earlier, I think spying did occur to a basis for concern is a little bit less, but where is he getting it from? I mean, the pattern with Barr is... Look, he may have evidence, he may have not, but I mean, he's yeah. given us a, a lot of... There, it, this, is, this is a very serious matter. And it's very confusing what he's trying to say he's even yeah. doing. Or and willing. know where he's willing to give some opinion or give some, put some meat on the bone in areas like this and then other areas when people want to know about the conclusion on obstruction, he says, I, I, I won't address that. So yeah. there seems to be a little bit of a double standard in the way he's answering questions. This is a way for them to just stall things, I think. You know, he needs to collect information. He's going to look at all of this. This keeps this narrative alive for them to say, <laughs> investigate the investigators while we head toward the 2020 election. It kind of gives them a talking point. Gloria, let me get you back in on this. Um, because we had to cut you off to go back into the hearing. Sure. Um, we, what we were talking about was how Bill Barr is also walking a line when it comes to answering to what the president has said and giving his take on it. With regard to witch hunt, he says, I'm not going to characterize it. It is what it is. We asked about, he totally exonerated. Bill Barr said he's not going to discuss it until the report is out. 
Right. I mean, you're right. He's clearly walking a fine line. But as as it regards to what you guys have been talking about just a moment ago yeah. about the unauthorized surveillance or the spying, he made it very clear where he comes down on this. He said, I would say brief the target, which would be, I presume, Donald Trump and the campaign, right. Rudy Giuliani or Chris Christie or whomever it was. Very clear where where he comes down on it. And then he said, um, there is a basis for my concern, but I'm not going to talk to you about it. Right. So it's clear that he's already started looking at this. And, you know, I don't know that he comes down to the sort of illegal witch hunt of the president of the United States. But as Evan Perez was saying earlier, if you are working inside the FBI, you are wondering how are you supposed to do a counterintelligence investigation uh, if you believe that perhaps people you were looking at were willing participants? Do you brief them? Not necessarily the president of the United States, but who are you supposed to talk to you to about this while this is an ongoing uh, investigation? I think that's what the inspector general is clearly right. looking at. And so the question that I have, and I think Evan may have alluded to this before, the question mm -hmm. I have is, why would you need two investigations if you already have one? Yeah, I mean, Ellie, Gloria, give me, uh, Ellie, Jennifer, give me a final take on that. Yeah, it, it, it's, I think it's for show and I think it's political. It's not necessary investigatively. It sends really confusing messages to the people inside the Department of Justice about what their job is and when they'll be second guessed in potentially really consequential ways. All right. I agree. I mean, I think he's trying to appease the president. And you know, anytime Congress asks you to do something, you say, sure, I'll take a look. I'll do it. I'll gather the information. I'll take a look. You know, I, I think that's what he's doing here. And, you know, we'll have to see where it goes.